legs he'd been pressed from the inside by 57 channels who just comes away with a half and gone behind him was in actual fact now 57 channels by a half a length from Major's Legacy as they approach the second lap. Again a fine jump by the one in front and goes two lengths clear now of Major's Legacy. Up front and stays at it back in first. Long run towards the last fence. And it's 57 channels being pressed again on the outside by Major's Legacy. Before then back to a closing up for Ransom. Up front however it's very close between the two on the inside with the paler colours 57 channels. And the orange colours on the outside is Major's Legacy. Five then back to up for Ransom. 57 channels. Has two to spare as he races away from it for Major's Legacy, who stays at it back in second. Up for Ransom looks beaten as they turn in for home. 57 channels by two and a half from Major's Legacy. Up towards the final bend and turning in. In the Bulger, set sail for home on the one in front, but being pressed again by Major's Legacy on the outside as they race for home over 57 channels. Major's Legacy comes with the run on the outside, but still 57 channels as they race towards the line by two lengths as they race towards it. 57 channels wins it. A very impressive display of jumping by this one from Major's Legacy. Home, all grouped up in front. Still Dan Tits on Dramat Hero. Then comes Blazing Crack, one gone there. Was uh, uh, Dramat Hero is gone, and so too Dante's son. This leaves um, in front Blazing Crack from Peafield and Wee River, drawing right away then from Manila for me, and after these knock on heights of Mr. Pipeman. It's in front, Blazing Crack, Mike Phillips with two lengths to spare over and improving Wee River. He gets within a length of the race towards the final fence. Wee River now comes to challenge on the outside of Blazing Crack. Wee River touches down with a length of spare as they race for home. Wee River now from Blazing Crack. Peafy stays at it back in third. They're drawing right away from the others. That's Mr. Pipeman, Manellan, for me, and knock on height. Wee River turns in, but being pressed again on the outside by Blazing Crack. But as they race into the final bend, Wee River now has gone clear of Blazing Crack and Peafield up for home. Wee River strides right away in the closing stages in the hands of Tom Costello Jr. Wins it impressively from Blazing Crack. Peafy stays at it in third, then back in fourth comes Mr. Pipeman, fifth. There is a jockey still down on the far side and is being attended to by the danger to him as they come away from Moon Castle. Racing for home, the Silver Rose has a length to spare over Fairy Mist. As they come across, the Silver Rose appears to be going the better between himself and the second one with one fence to jump. They pulled right away from Moon Castle and Electrophane with one fence to jump. The Silver Rose pressed from the inside and uh, this other one stumbles and landing Fairy Mist with a length between them as they race for home. It's the Silver Rose from Fairy Mist staying at it with the mistake of the last could have lost the race for him as they race for home. The Silver Rose moves away again from Fairy Mist. Turning in, the Silver Rose Staying at it back in second is Fairy Miss, but there's four lengths between them more as they race towards the line. The Silver Rose wins it from Fairy Miss. You've got to look a good bit back to the third horse, which is Moon Castle, and Electrophane is next. Within two, with one fence to jump, racing towards it, called Catherine. Now a windy citizen settled back again. Two lengths adrift and just waiting to pounce as they race towards the second last. Call Catherine from a windy citizen as they race towards the final fence. Call Catherine gets close to it. A windy citizen moves through on the inside. Clever move as they race towards the final bend. It's a windy citizen. Call Catherine, however, won't give up on the outside as they race towards it. It's a windy citizen from Call Catherine as they turn in. A windy citizen moving on from Call Catherine. As they race up towards the line, a windy citizen was held up for a late challenge by William O'Sullivan as they race up towards the line. A windy citizen called Catherine is staying at it back in second. This could be close still. However, as they race towards the line, still a windy citizen kept up to his work by the jockey as they race towards the line. There's going to be about three lengths at it at the post. A windy citizen wins it called Catherine. The gamble is second. Challenge golden arrangement for second. And then comes Curry Glowstar back in fourth, moving towards the final fence. Matty Tynan, fancied in Liz Gould in the opening meeting. Has one fence, a clever jump again, but gets away with a mistake from Golden Arrangement and Dusty Surprise. Matty Tynan is a distance clear of the others as they turn in. The warm favourite in the capable hands of Philip Fenton, who just looks quietly over his shoulder. He'll see Ken Whelan keeping the second horse up to his work with Dusty Surprise coming to challenge this for second. If you're on to be second for the favourite, there could be a race split with Metro Style coming too on the outside of them as they race up towards the line. 
It's going to be close between these. Dusty Surprise, Metro Style, as they race towards the Dusty Surprise will be second from this angle. For Metro Style, Golden Arrangement. But no doubt about the one who won the race impressively. That